everyone, and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails, the weekly podcast that helps you grow your business, improve your life, and enjoy yourself along the way. I'm your host, Alan Langer, and every week we try to bring you the best thought leaders, the best business leaders, and the best minds out there to help you succeed in business and in life. So sit back, relax, grab your pad, your pen, and your favorite beverage, and enjoy the next episode of Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. This is your host, Alan Langer. We've got show 26 coming up tonight, and another great guest lined up in Lauren V. Davis. We're going to get to Lauren in a second because she's going to help us all to get on Instagram. We haven't spoken about Instagram at all on this podcast, and I'm very excited to get into this because old fogies like myself and probably half of you listening need to be on Instagram. So, but before we get to there, just a couple of uh, notes. Remember, the website is marketingandsalespodcast.com, marketingandsalespodcast.com. Don't forget to send me your question of the week or the Ask Alan segment. You just go to that website, go to the contact section, write me a question. If the question is chosen for the show, you will receive an autographed signed copy of my book for free. So get it in. We've got a good question tonight about Instagram. We'll get to that at the end of the podcast. So Without any further delay, Lauren V. Davis, welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. How are you tonight? Good. And thank you so much for having me. I'm totally excited to be here. And like, I can't think of anything better than being interviewed while also drinking. This is like <laughs> it's great. The best interview. I, I've had a few people who could not make the evening session. So we were turning it into Marketing and Sales Over Coffee, which is not nearly as much fun. So. We, I start every podcast asking my guests, what are they enjoying? So what do you have tonight? And I, I, you gave me a little pin and it, it's going to be a good one. So I am drinking Basil Hayden's. I love, I love a good whiskey, a good bourbon, a good rye. So I, that's what I'm drinking tonight. Drinking it neat, right in Woman the glass. after my own heart. Good for you. <laughs> well, I have for the first time, I was telling Lauren before we hit the record button, you know, Jack Daniels obviously has been around, but you know, not, it's not a, a sipping whiskey, but I found this Jack Daniels rye, straight rye whiskey, and I'm trying it. And I got to tell you, it's pretty good. So I made myself a Manhattan tonight on the rock. So Lauren, a virtual cheers with your Basil Hayden. Cheers. And cheers. And let's get into some marketing. Let's get into some, well, first, let me tell you a couple of things about Lauren. So Lauren is 33. So she's been doing this a long time for being 33. She is considered, at least in my world, and I think in a quite a other world, people's world, a LinkedIn expert. She really knows what she's doing. She has her own marketing company called Lauren Davis Creative. And she has a journey that she's going to kind of tell you about where she started a record store with her boyfriend, now husband, and why she got into the social media and the marketing stuff. So Lauren, before I screw it up, why don't you tell everyone your, your story? <laughs> Yeah, so it's thank you so much for that introduction and thank you for having me. It it's an interesting story. It's a story that I have never quite heard before. And that story is that when I was 19 and my husband he was my boyfriend then, my husband now, he was 25, we started a record store in Rockford, Illinois. And Rockford, Illinois is about 90 miles west of Chicago, and it was not necessarily the greatest time for the economy, especially not in my city. And it was a very niche type of store. It's punk rock clothing, metal clothing, <laughs> records, vinyl records. And and uh, we, you know, we found out really quickly that you can't just open a store and people come in. You know, you have to get the word out there. You have to find your audience. You have to build that audience and show up for your community. So what happened was I found that out really fast. I had to figure out how to get people in the door. And at the time I was uh, going to college for journalism. I wanted to be a journalist. And at some point, move, my, my dreams of childhood was like, move to a big city, become a journalist like Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City and you know, <laughs> do all of this. And, and here I am in Rockford owning a record store, a punk rock <laughs> record store. And I was like, but I, what happened was I realized as I was looking up like, I was making flyers, I was copy pasting flyers, I was creating websites and and profiles on all the different platforms of social media that existed at the time, which were mostly MySpace, 
Facebook had just started for college students only. So I had a college ID. So I was on Facebook. So this was 2006, right? 2006, correct. Wow, yes. that's really when the internet was kind of just, you know, yeah. becoming born. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter popped up, you know, there was YouTube. So I was just getting on all of these different platforms and trying to create a presence around our business online. And what happened was we, I started first, there's two things that happened. The first thing was I said, what is this that I'm doing? Like, this is really lighting a fire under my ass. Like, I really like this. This is really fun. And it's really exciting to me. And I remember looking up because I didn't really have this concept of what marketing was. And especially at the time, there wasn't something called social media marketing or digital marketing necessarily. Right. right. So I started, you know, looking up what it was, what I was doing, and I came up with marketing and graphic design. So I switched my major in college, started um, going to school for marketing and graphic design. But what really happened was that I learned that my real life experience taught me more than I could ever hope to imagine learning in school. And I, while I did get a degree in it and went for a more traditional route as well, what I learned from real life brought me so much in the way of relationships, in the way of education, and in the way of experience. And so people started contacting me from all over the place saying, hey, can you do this work for me? Can you, can you get my business out there online? Can you help my business get, get followers and be part of the community the way you did? And I said, sure. So I started a design and marketing business for myself in about 2010. And I also helped create a nonprofit in my hometown for local businesses, wow. help local businesses receive more education and get in touch with their community more. And with that nonprofit, me and a few other businesses started a social media conference in my hometown. So all of these things kind of blossomed from this accidental leadership that that happened when I was 19 years old with starting a really really unique store that that no one knew they needed and and people recognize what you were doing to get people in the store and realize i need her to do that for me correct yeah so people wow. said can you do this for me and what ha honestly what happened was i started doing it for businesses then i started attending different conferences to kind of vet speakers to bring them to my my city for my conference and to build relationships and connections out there in the world. And then I started getting in touch with podcasters and speakers and personal brands. And so my focus really switched in the last six or seven years or so to helping a lot more personal brands, a lot more thought leaders and people that work on stages and authors and trying to bring them really to the hmm. forefront of their communities online. And so what I like to say is I bring these small business concepts that I learned from having a small business, a local business, who's very, you know, that local business feel like they're very invested yeah. in their community, their community loves them, bring it, how do I bring that from small business to a podcaster or a speaker or a thought leader on stage and build their community digitally? Wow, that's fascinating. I have to ask, yeah. Rockford Peaches, is that, are you, is that the Rockford from the, from the famous movie, uh, League of Their it Own? It sure is. Yes, oh, it is. Rockford awesome. Peaches, <laughs> Cheap Trick. That's uh -huh. another one that people know from Rockford. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, now I'm definitely coming out to visit you because I, I, that's one of my favorite movies ever. So the Rockford Please Peaches. Please do. <laughs> we carry some Rockford Peaches t-shirts inside our record store. No kidding. All right. Yeah. Well, I definitely want one. <laughs> cool. All right. So. Tell us, and first of all, that's a great, that's an amazing story. And now you're like become, you know, I remember when we, we spoke, we booked this like two months ago because you were so busy. You couldn't even, you know, some people like can book right away and you're like, no, I'm so busy. I'm, I'm flat out. And for the next two months, which is awesome <laughs> because that you're, that you're, that means you're busy. Thank um, you for your patience with that. No, trust me. It's awesome because it's worth it. So you, you, do you spend most of your time building, like, do you start? with Instagram with your clients? Is that, is that your starting point? And what would you say for, for people who are kind of just kicking around on Instagram and not really knowing what to do with it? I know that's two questions, but. Yeah, no, I, drinking. that's a great so question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question. What I rec, I, I'm, I love all digital marketing platforms. Instagram happens to be the place where I like to hang out. So it seems like that's where, that's where I'm at the most, probably because I am, because I like, 
I like it inside Instagram. It's my house, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what I recommend with, with people, with all of my clients that I work with is that you start, you, you choose one and one. So you choose one platform that makes social media super fun for you. Something that makes you want to show up on social media every day, something that gets you excited to, to log in and see what, what's going on and then choose one platform where you think your are the next best platform where you think your audience is going to show up. So get used to those two platforms first, and then you can start working in other platforms, um, but get really good at those two platforms. So sometimes it's Instagram, sometimes it's LinkedIn, sometimes it's Twitter. I mean, I've had, I've had them all. So sometimes it's mm -hmm. TikTok. You just have to see which one is the one that makes it fun for them every day and then find the one that makes it that will they'll show up for the audience the most. And the reason why I do that is because if you can get into the habit of making a social media platform really fun for you, then you'll enjoy getting on social media in different ways. And with different different platforms, you'll kind of bring that all in together. I see. So I, I I would venture to assume it's hard to find the to, to see the demographics of podcasts as you know, but I know that I do most of my publicity for this podcast on LinkedIn, so I'm assuming I get a lot of LinkedIn people, and I the LinkedIn people that I speak to, a lot of them are not on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, but I I, I will readily admit that you know for every post I put on LinkedIn, I probably you know for every four posts I put on LinkedIn, I put one on Instagram. And I know I should be doing the same. Tell the Instagram, tell the LinkedIn people, you know, is it important to be on Instagram? Is it important to, should you put the same type of posts that you're posting on, on LinkedIn, on Instagram? And, and cause I, I know that I actually get more traction on Instagram than I do on Facebook. I don't know why, but I get a lot more people re responding to my posts on Instagram than I do on Facebook. So I, I concentrate on that more, but I still don't concentrate as, as much as I should. So I, if for that question, I would say, you know, it's really depends on you. So you, Alan, most of your people are on LinkedIn. That's where you feel like you show up and it's the most fun for you because you get the most engagement. You're right. talking to people the most. That feels fun to you to open that up every day, right? right? Right. Yep, exactly. So then the next best place you've identified that people should be, are probably showing up for you is Instagram because that's where you're getting the next best engagement, the next best mm -hmm. likes and people paying attention. Yep. So for you, yeah, I would say Instagram would be a great platform for you to show up on. Would I repurpose the same exact content from LinkedIn to Instagram? Probably not because okay. people behave a little bit differently on Instagram than they behave on LinkedIn. Could you repurpose super similar content or almost the same? Totally. You know, okay. the number one thing about Instagram that you have to think about is like links don't work inside your captions. Yeah. So, you know, you can't just, you can't, you know, copy paste a link inside your caption and expect people to be able to go to it so that you will have to optimize your bio to make sure that people can get to what they need right away. And another thing about Instagram is it started as a platform for photography. So it is still a very visually based platform. It's not, you know, it's not as much article based or post based as much as it is visual based. So right, right, right. when you're looking at your profile on Instagram and someone comes to your profile for a split second, they're going to decide whether they want to follow you or not. So if it's just a bunch of cut off pictures or words or something like that, and I'm not saying that's how yours looks, I'm saying right. like in general, if mm -hmm. you were just repurp straight repurposing from LinkedIn, then there's a chance that they might not stay on your profile because it they can't figure out what you're doing from right from the basis of looking at it for a split second. So while I'm, while I don't want to scare you away from doing Instagram, because it seems like you'll have to put forth a little bit more effort. I'm really talking about just the most minimal amount of effort and a few different things you can do to really show up on Instagram in the right way and well, make it look really nice. Yeah. So what I learned, you know, trial and error is I, I would just take, like, say I would post a video on LinkedIn and I would just, I would throw it on Instagram and realize an hour later that it wasn't the right size and the headline was cut off or my side of my face was cut off and stuff like that. So then I just found an app where I just take the video, I dump it into the app, it resizes it for me, reformats it. And then I just write more of an Instagram post than what I wrote on LinkedIn. And, but you're right. So the, the part that's frustrating is 
link Instagram doesn't want you to put the links in within the post because they want you to stay on the platform. Right. So you got to put that in your bio. And so I, I was going to start using Linktree. Would you recommend uh, like something like that? So Linktree is a, is a really excellent resource. What's even you can and everyone can use it. It's it's pretty much free. I think for so many links, you can totally use that, and it it really it it creates a solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. What's even better if you have the time or resources to do it is creating your own resource page on your website. So that way you can actually drive people to your website if they click on the link. The, oh, so you're saying... So create essentially yeah. what a link tree is, which is like a resource page. That's essentially what a link tree is. For those that don't know, it's basically a one single link. And when you open up that link, it gives you several options of where you can go. So you can add in your latest blog post. You can add in your latest video on YouTube. You can add in your latest lead magnet or or free freebie or resource in there. And mm -hmm. then people, all they have to do is click on that one link from your bio. It will give them the option to go to any of those different links. So what I'm saying is what's even better than that, if you have the time or resources to do it, is to create a resource page on your website where you can plug in different things whenever you have them. So just like a link tree, except for instead of it going to link trees website of your website, you are actually going to your own website. Your own You're website. driving traffic to your own website. Yes. Would you, would you, instead of doing link tree, would you just visit, like just put your website in uh, under your bio and then uh, they can go from there. Or you're saying it's a little more, it's better to be a little more specific to that resource page. I guess it depends on what what you're sending them to. So if you are right. someone who is who is developing new free resources for them to get on your email list, if you're if you want to point them towards specific blog posts, it might be nice to just have a resource page on your website. So just build one more page out on your website. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got homepage, you've got an about me page, you've got a products page, build in a resource page where they can go to all of those different places from right. that resource page that you can edit easily. Yeah, um, absolutely. But that's not necessary, but it is it is even better than using Linktree. But you can use Linktree all the same. It'll make it nice and easy for you. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great way. Either way is, is, is a great way to do it. That's a great piece of advice there. And another so, good way, another go great way to get people to a link that you're posting on Instagram is to say, hey, if you want this, like, let's say you write a blog post and you post about it and you say, you know, like, it's just a little snippet or a preview of that blog post. Mm -hmm. Or for, for you, where, where are you usually directing them? Let me, I'll give you an example just for you. Uh, so uh, quite often I'm, I'm posting trailers or, or clips of my podcast, a preview of the podcast. Okay. So for you, I would say, you know, you, you post a little trailer, you post a preview caption kind of for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you say, if you want me, if you want the link to this, right to this podcast episode, just leave one emoji in the comments and I will message you the oh. link to the podcast. I like you're going to write that down. I, I am actually, you saw me grabbing my pad, right? <laughs> so, and everyone listening should be writing that down too. The reason why is because then people can absolutely go visit that podcast episode when they want to, or they can stay on the platform and visit it later. It's top of mind. You're in their messages. And the more you message people back and forth on Instagram, the more you communicate and build relationships with people on Instagram, the more your content's going to show up in front of them. Wow. Emoji in the comments. That is brilliant. Okay. We can end Hot the podcast tip. right now. That was the bomb. All right. right <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank nice, you. Nice Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, that's a great because I normally like I'll post I'll post a a um a video post on LinkedIn, you know, about some sort of value I'm trying to add. And then I try to put that on Instagram if I remember. That's that's the thing is I have to like kick myself in the ass because I'm like once I get it on LinkedIn, I'm like, okay, that's done. Oh shit, I gotta know now and, and do it on on Instagram as well. But I need to I need to be a little more intentional with that. So which I think a lot of people do, you know, when you're when you're posting on multiple platforms, it, it can be a little time consuming. For sure. And I, I learned this, that trick from, it, it makes perfect sense for the Instagram algorithm, but I kind of like saw one of my favorite food bloggers 
do that often. And then I, I talked to her about it and I heard her talk about it on someone else's podcast too. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so brilliant. So I started trying it out for a while Mm -hmm. and, and I know from Instagram themselves that the key to getting in front of people on Instagram is relationships, relevancy, recency, all of those things. So, so it makes perfect sense why that works. Mm -hmm. But another great reason why that's such a great tool is because honestly, you know, the whole point of social media and the whole thing that I teach my clients and the people that I work with is that social media should be used like real life and we should be using it to actually build these relationships, not just get more followers, get more Mm -hmm. likes, you know, get more people paying attention. Like the whole point of using social media to get business is treating it like real life. So if you were going to a networking event and you walked up to someone and shoved your business card in their face and then gave them your elevator pitch and walked away, like what are the chances that they're going to call you, you know? And that's Mm -hmm. kind of what drives me crazy about some social media platforms and like how these copy pasted messages just get recycled and recycled and people are using the same exact ones because they took the same exact course on how to send the same exact (laughs) copy pasted email. And I'm just like, you know, that's not, that is not how, like, if you walked up to me and you just pitched me at a networking event, we would not walk away friends. You know, I'd be like, who's that guy? Who's that girl? Yeah. So, um, so if you, what I teach people that I work with, cause usually when people come to start working with me, they're a little, they're hyper and stressed out a little bit about social media. And they're like, there's just so many things and it's so overwhelming. And I don't know how to be good on every platform and how to get followers and how to get likes and how to produce good content. And I don't know what to post all of these things. Right. Mm-hmm. And I just say, take a deep breath and let's approach this, how you as a person would approach it in real life. How would you talk to your audience in real life? How would you produce content for the people that you want to serve? Mm -hmm. And if you can just take a deep breath and step out of that panic and step out of like, how do I do all of this the right way? You can really get to know people where they're at on the social media platform that you want to be on. And let me throw this out there and see if you agree with me. I think you will. That another key thing that I think a lot of people miss on social media is they forget about who their ideal client is. They're trying to reach so many people and so many people are not your ideal client. You really want to, you, if you want to use social media for business, figure out who your client avatar is and, and figure out who you are. Don't be all of these things. Have your own little niche because that's going to attract a lot more people than just being jack of all trades kind of thing. So would you agree with that? I would absolutely agree with that. And, you know, you could, some people agree with finding a specific avatar. Some people think that it can be a little bit more broad than that. And both of them are right, you mm-hmm. know, but what you do need to do is figure out who you are and how you're showing up for people and mm-hmm. ta- speak about something specific because those people will find you and they're going to bring friends. And what it really boils down to is like, do, do your followers feel validated? Do they feel like you're connecting with them or do they feel like you're posting and ghosting and, and leaving the platform? Like, right. Here's a post. I got to get it on Instagram. See you later. I don't care about what you say or how you interact with me. Hmm. If you can show up on whatever platforms you're on and be there as a, be a present person on that platform, connect with people, talk to other people, message with them, communicate with them, see how they're actually feeling those are the people that will go far on any platform. Yep. I agree. I, I, that's what I've done on LinkedIn. And, and that's, so I, you know, now my secondary, I, I have to do that on, on Instagram. And I think I'm close. I do have a decent amount. I mean, I'm not, you know, yeah, I, I have a decent amount of followers, but I, I could have a lot more. That's for sure. So. Um, I mean, what I always say is like, if, if you had, I think you're like in the, uh, maybe five or 600 range or something like that. Mm-hmm followers imagine having 600 people in that studio that you're sitting in right now right exactly imagine having imagine speaking to 600 people from stage yeah it's a great point it really is and and imagine how many people are looking at your stuff and not engaging but they're still seeing it you know the lurkers on linkedin is like you know you'll you'll see you'll you'll post something and there'll be 50 likes and 75 comments but there's 3,000 views of your video Right. 2,900 people who didn't say anything that watched your video. So 
they're out there, they're watching you. So just be consistent yes. and, and be intentional. Yes, be intentional. And honestly, just don't be afraid to be yourself. And, you know, I hate it's like such a buzzword, like be authentic, be genuine, <laughs> but really be just don't be afraid to be yourself because the reason why people like you in real life is the reason why they will like you online too. That's a great point. That's a great, great point. I really like that. Yep. Yeah. Don't, don't be fake. Don't be someone you're not because right. people right. see it exactly. and they'll, they'll, they'll smell right through it. So, and that's so, kind of how we got connected. We met on LinkedIn and you, I, you commented on a post that I posted about a podcast interview I was on and you listened to the podcast, I think. Mm -hmm. And then yep. You said, "Hey, I think we should talk. We need to, we we need to connect." And so we set up a meeting and here we are. I'm on your podcast. I've spoken to your mastermind and there's like you know, the endless opportunities in cultivating real relationships with people. It really is. And and I'm very intentional with who I connect with on LinkedIn. I just don't accept, you know, I get a lot of, "Hey, would you connect with me? You connect with me." And then, you know, you, you, as soon as you hit connect, then you get the, the sales pitch and then the calendar link. It like drives me crazy. It's just like I don't know you. You just sent me a, a 10 paragraph direct message with your calendar link. So right. don't, if you're listening, listening to this, don't do that. You know, be, don't be do it. Don't authentic, do it. like you said, authentic with your connections too. Yeah. Because one time I, one time a, a guy reached out to me and I said, no, thank you twice. And then he came back and said, <laughs> did you mean to ghost me? I just blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I literally, I wrote back like, does this work for you? This is <laughs> awful. Does this really work for you? <laughs> it's, it's, and, those are the salespeople that they use this term sales is a numbers game. Uh -huh. The more people you talk to, the more sales you'll get. It's just, it's just numbers. And then 2% for them is a good, is a good rate. Now, I, I could never live that way, but there are people out. If, if it didn't work, it wouldn't still be happening. So it does, there is a percentage that work. But it does, Terrible. I'm sure it works as far as sales. And if you don't care about your personal brand, no problem. Yeah, exactly. But if, if the idea is to build your personal brand as you are building your personal brand, Alan, like, you know, you're a speaker, you're a thought leader, you've written a book, you're an author, you can't afford to ruin your personal brand like that. So no. as long as these guys or, and girls or whoever is writing to me, don't mind about ruining their personal brand, like. That's, that's the problem I see. If, if you're trying to build yourself out there as a leader and you want to be impactful as a leader in your industry, sending 100 messages after someone says, no, thank you, is not the way to do it. It's not the way to do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. Here's a quick story about something not to do. This is a little, a little off the topic, but it, it's, okay. <laughs> it's funny because this is, yeah. we're just going to talk about some funny things. So I, 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 this was about five months ago now. I tried... I tried an email, you know, I do email funnels for people and I did one for myself, but I had someone else do it for me and it was fine. But this one guy, I guess he, pre he, he got my email and he hit unsubscribe and apparently the system didn't unsubscribe him. Yikes. And then apparently he did it a second time and it didn't unsubscribe him. All of a sudden I get an, I get a direct message from him on LinkedIn and I'm not exaggerating, with about 15 F-bombs in it. Now, LinkedIn, you can see, obviously, your full name, your title, who you work for, your company. And he went nuts on me saying because, I, because the email system kept sending him another email. And rather than just being professional and say, listen, I tried to subscribe twice. Can you help me here? Yeah. He, he, he F-bombed me on, on LinkedIn. And I was blown. I was literally blown away. Like, I cannot believe this guy is putting himself out there like this, I could literally, and he was not an owner of a company. He sure, worked yeah. for a company. And I, I, I was so mad. I was like, I'm calling his, his manager. And then I'm like, you know what? This is not worth it. I'm not getting into a <laughs> yeah. pissing match, but it was crazy what people will write sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten everything from sales pitches to like people hitting on me to, oh. you know, everything in between. It's just like, that's not how social media is supposed to work. <laughs> LinkedIn is not Tinder, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. LinkedIn, the mess, like I was telling you today, I missed a couple of messages from you. And it's honestly, it's because I just had to like lim give myself boundaries to check my messages on LinkedIn once a week because it's not, 
there's not a lot of pr- productivity going on in LinkedIn messages for me right now, but right. that might be different for other people. But right. for me right now, it's mostly happening in the comments, in the interactions with others, in a few private messages. People who want to message me who who are, are connected with me are going to e- usually email me or text me anyway. So or instagram me or instagram yeah. which is why i realized lauren's not going to answer me on linkedin i got to go to instagram <laughs> and then boom there you were yeah sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> uh, so so when you talked to to my to my group on fridays which was awesome you you did you had a uh, something i think you I, if i remember correctly it was three things that that your posts need to have or what can you can you kind of go over that a little bit i remember you you just you kind of touched on it a bit about 10 minutes ago yeah. Um, so the, what I talked about with your group was the Instagram algorithm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Essentially what determines what either you see in your feed or what your customers see in their feed, it's based on interest, recency, and relationships. Um, so interest is the first one I talked about with your group. And it's basically how much Instagram predict, predicts that you're going to care about a post. So it analyzes like past behavior on similar content. It machine analyzes content that you've already looked at. So like if you look at your explore page, which is the page with the little magnifying glass, if you click that magnifying glass and you look on your explore page, Mm -hmm. you're going to see things that you've looked at similar content to what you've looked at in the past. So if you really want to get an idea of what kind of content (laughs) you're Gentlemen, don't have your wives look at your search page. (laughs) Look at your explore page. It's always a treat when I open up a client's account for the first time. (laughs) Oh, wow. You get Um, to see that, huh? (laughs) So what, so, I mean, it's, it's, you can see basically what kind of content you're interested in and whatever kind of content you're interested in, it's going to put that kind of content in front of you more often. Right. So that means though, that it's going to put that kind of content in front of you on the explore page randomly from accounts that you might not follow, but in front of you in your feed from people you do follow. So that means you have to kind of dig deep and figure out what kind of stuff are your followers really interested in. Think about what's Mm. on their explore pages. What do you think is showing up on their explore page? When, Mm. if you can think like that and, and think backwards like that, then you can kind of get an idea for what people are paying attention to when they're your customers. All right. So then the next thing is recency. So how recently the post was shared with prioritization for timely posts over week old posts. So that means that if you're posting, if if you are posting more recently and people are interested in your content, it's going to show them your post first because you're posting on a more recent basis. Does that mean you have to post three times a day or five times a day or one time a week or four times a week? Like, no, there's no actual rule about that because if your content is interesting to the people who follow you, your stuff is going to show up in front of them regardless. But what it does mean is if you post once a day and you have really, really interesting stuff and someone else posts three times, or, or if you post once a week and someone else posts three times a week, somewhat, your follower is going to see their stuff more because they're posting more frequently, more recently. If that makes the interest sense. is the same, yeah. Yes. Okay. The next thing is relationship, and this is the most important one. So how close are you to the person who posted it? So how close is your customer to you? It's going to rank you higher for pe- with people that you've interacted with a lot. So this means keep the conversation going with people who follow you. Keep conversations going in direct messages, especially things that you... That means like people you are tagged with in photos, people who are you're tagged with in stories, people who you direct message with regularly, you're going to, your stuff is going to show up more often in their feeds if they follow you. So relationship is key. Like that's all. If you take away anything from this podcast episode, it's that really building relationships on Instagram is super, super important. And when Um, you say relationships, that means like, because I, I've realized since I've known you and spoken to you that if I have a conversation with someone like twice that week, all of a sudden I open Instagram and their feed is almost right there, at least the top three. And then it, it never dawned on me until I started putting two and two together that yes. if I'm having a conversation, so the conversation is really equals the relationship, which equals seeing yes. their stuff more, correct? 
Correct. So what I would do is spend some time getting to know your followers. So kind of look through your, who follows you, pay attention to some of their content, go through and ask some genuine questions about something that interests you on their page. Cut, get some conversations going in the direct messages. Reply to people's stories. Just don't be a ghost on Instagram. Don't be someone who posts and then disappears, you know? Okay. Because if you... And when I say relationships, I mean like friendships, you know, business relationships, networking relationships. Let's go back to that networking example. If you're in the room with someone and you find yourself standing next to them and, you know, drinking a glass of wine or a Manhattan or Basil Hayden's or whatever next to Mm -hmm. them. And you guys talk all night. You're like, you can't like get enough talking to each other. You're like, oh my gosh, this is a great conversation. We could do so much work together. And then you leave the room or you leave the networking event and go home. And maybe you have an email in your email box after that. And they're like, I'm so glad we got to know each other tonight. That was so much fun. Do you want to set up a coffee meeting, you know, next Wednesday at two o'clock? And you say, yes, well, obviously in non-pandemic coronavirus days, <laughs> you say yes, and then you go to coffee, and then maybe you start working together. Right. So to me, it makes no sense why people think like, oh, I can just post on Instagram, and then I can start collecting leads. Right. You know, you have to kind of cultivate that friendship or that relationship is what I'm calling it. But relationship is very important on Instagram. So if it sees that you are interacting with each other a lot, and you're really getting to know each other in the networking event that is Instagram then it's going to put your content in front of them more if they follow you. So I love that whole metaphor. So Instagram is a networking event and constantly having this conversation with people is, is, is meeting them for coffee because right. you can't just meet someone and then say, okay, here, uh, I want to, you know, I hire me to, to do your website. It doesn't work. Yeah, that way. Likely after that networking event, they're still not going to hire you on the spot. Right, right. Exactly. You're still, they're still going to have to see some, they're going to go home. They're going to check out your website. Uh They're going, there's going to be several touches in between those times. And honestly, we all want to work with people who fit into our, our avatar or the, we're going to want to work with people who fit into what we want to work with. Right. Like we all have our ideal clients of like people who I have a a list on my desktop of people. I'm looking at it right now. People I don't want to work with. Right. Yeah. (laughs) That's equally (laughs) as important. Probably more important. (laughs) Yeah. It was hard for me to narrow down who I wanted to work with because I like a lot. I like everyone, (laughs) but there were a few, there were a few character references that I was like, I don't want to work with people like this. Mm -hmm. So I wrote them down because now when I get a new lead or a, a new referral, I'm like, okay, does this fit into the, do, do any of these things apply? I, do these seem like, does this seem like someone who would fit any of these characteristics? And if not, then I can, I'll move them to the next. That's awesome that you do step. that. A lot of people don't do that. They just like, they try to get as many clients as they can. And that's not the way to do business because you're going to spend a lot of time dealing with the bad clients a lot more than you do deal with the good clients. Yeah. I learned, <laughs> I yeah, learned that does. that wasn't yeah. a, that wasn't something I started from the beginning. And I, I, had several moments of burnout in my in my uh, 14 years in business so I've had to learn mm-hmm. to like figure out how to how to create the work environment I want for myself. Good for you that you got there. So I'm actually we're actually almost at 45 minutes already. It's crazy wow. how fast the time goes. I did tell you that it, we had a question of the week from Shelly <laughs> in Washington about how many times to post, but you Met off already kind of talked about that. I have a backup question, which I think is going to be even better. This is from Johnny in Tennessee. Okay. And Johnny writes, so this is the Ask Alan segment. So again, people are listening. Send in your question. If we use it, you get a free autograph copy of my book. I know that probably doesn't mean much, but hey, it's a free book. Why, why not? It's nice. So. I always love a free book. <laughs> So here's the question from Johnny. He asked, how important is doing stories on Instagram? And that was something I was going to ask. And I think that's a cool question because I that's a question I wonder myself. So stories are a great way to get a little bit more comfortable with your followers. 
So your followers are going to, if like, like we were talking about the building those relationships, if you're building relationships with your followers, they're going to see your stories more often. It's going to pop up. Have you ever noticed the people on Instagram you talk to the most or that you look at their content the most, even if you're not super interacting with them, mm-hmm. their stories show up first yep, in, yep. in the top of your Instagram. So if you're connecting with people a lot, your stories are going to show up to them first. So it's a re- great gateway for them to get to know you and then get to your profile. So, Oh, I see. Okay. Your stories are put in front of people that are already following you. Okay. Um, the exception to that is if you use a location or if you use a hashtag that gets picked up by the story algorithm, sometimes it will show it to more people, but it won't necessarily show it with your profile name. So it's not like they'll necessarily find you in that way. So, Really focus your stories on the people that are already following you. So that content is for people who are following you, who you want to kind of bring others to your page. So it's a great place to connect with them on a more personal level. It's a great place for behind the scenes content. So, and I also, I always tell people to think of stories like an actual story. So don't just post one slide, but kind of think about it as a beginning, middle and end, just like a regular story. Okay. So post maybe... You can do three slides. Stories are 15 seconds. They can either be a still shot or a video. You can add stickers. You can add GIFs to them. You can add a caption to them. But regardless, kind of think of it in a three-part, like beginning, middle, and end. It doesn't have to be three slides. It could be 18 slides if you want. But kind of take them, take your audience through that journey. And stories are a great way to lead someone up to a post or lead someone up to a podcast interview or lead someone to get to know you better. So I like to do behind the scenes. Like I'll probably do a little behind the scenes shot of right now or that what we Mm -hmm. did tonight, this podcast interview, or like before we jumped on this podcast interview, I took a picture of my whiskey glass and I I said, I saw that and I liked it. Yeah. (laughs) I said, I get to do a podcast interview with, with whiskey tonight or with a, with a drink tonight. Like this is my kind of night. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But what I'm doing is I'm letting my, my audience in on the fact that this is something cool that I get to do tonight. I get to be interviewed for a podcast that shows my reputability that somebody wants me on their podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this as a personal brand here. Yeah. It also shows um, that I like whiskey. That's another fun fact. Now people know that it also (laughs) shows the I'm drinking whiskey out of a glass from my record store. So I get to tag my record store in that post too. Um, I'll probably take a picture of us here tonight. I'll put that in my story too. And now people will see that and my followers will see that. And then when our interview comes out, I'll say, remember that one night that I got to drink whiskey while getting interviewed? Well, here's the interview. Go check it out. So it kind of lets people into my life in a little bit more of a casual way mm-hmm. than, than just a post that is, you know, a little bit more curated and a little bit more, more professional. Does that help? And yeah. And, and, and do you think, I think that's a great. So I can't answer this question. Normally, I can I can help the the host answer the question. I, sure. I have no idea. I'm I'm literally an, a story. I don't even want to call myself a novice. I when you said they're 15 seconds. So here here's here's what I mean by this. So LinkedIn came out with stories. Yes. Recently, right? Yes. So I said because oh, I've never done a story on Instagram. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I think I've done three stories on LinkedIn. And the thing that always throws me is I'm recording the story and then it stops. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. Oh crap. Do I start again? Like, how does that work? So if I start again, does it just sew it together or, or do um, you, you just keep, cause I, it sounds like sometimes I watch stories and it seems like they're just seamless, but they just go from piece to piece. How does that work? On Instagram, you can record up to a minute and it will sew them together. Oh, okay. So it'll okay. be four, four, 15 second slides. Okay. And then you could post those to your story, start over again like, and go on with your story. Okay. That's why I was saying it doesn't have to be three, three right. 15 second clips. It could be many if you want. The thing that I always recommend about the stories is just change the way that you're holding the camera from clip to clip, mix up your media. So do videos, then do still shot, then do a video, you know, add music, do whatever you can to kind of keep it interesting for people. Otherwise they'll just skip right on through it. 
Gotcha. Okay. And and obviously you just can follow that. It's pretty easy to do on well, on Instagram. You can figure out how to do all that. Yeah, it can be. I mean, it can be easy. I I think that it can be hard for people who haven't done it before. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to. I don't want to say it's easy and then and then have someone feel frustrated. Like oh, I'll never get this because mm-hmm. you absolutely can get it. But if you you know obviously find me on Instagram if you if you want a little help with that. I'm happy to help you figure things out. I also have a Facebook group where I teach social media tips for free every single week. So there's that too. All right. Well, that's a great segue because we are ending, we are coming to the end of the podcast. So uh, this has been awesome, Lauren. I want you to tell everyone how they can find you, how they can find your Facebook group. She's, she's right on folks. You, you, you need help. Send her a message and she will get back to you. Just message her on Instagram. She won't get back to you if you message her on LinkedIn. <laughs> I will get back to you on LinkedIn just maybe a week from when you <laughs> I'm just busting me. your chops. So how do people find you? So um, on Facebook, it's facebook.com backslash groups backslash understand social media. That's my free social media group. And understand you'll put, social media. Okay. Yep. Um, it's called, if you search it, it's called understanding social media marketing for entrepreneurs. Okay. And then on Instagram, I'm at L Davis Creative. So L Davis Creative is on Instagram. Feel free to send me a message. Say, you know, I heard you on Alan's podcast and I, I would love to connect with you. And I'm very, I'm very, uh, I, I read everything. I ca- try to comment back on everything. I try to message back everything. Like Instagram is my favorite place. So <laughs> find me there for sure. That's your house. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Lauren V Davis on LinkedIn. Yeah. So LinkedIn, it's the V as in what's your, what is your middle name? <laughs> it's my it's Vonix. I have a lot of names, but Vonix really? is my uh, maiden name. It's Latvian. It's okay. a b- small Baltic country, and I made it my middle name when I got married. So. Gotcha. So Lauren V Davis is yeah. on LinkedIn, and then uh, L Davis Creative on Instagram, and then the Facebook and all of that stuff. She's awesome, Lauren. Thank you very much for being here tonight. This was a blast, and. I will probably be hitting you up with some Instagram advice uh, in the future because I I am going to start stories and I am going to start posting more. So, and yeah, um, you you can feel free to critique me as much as you want. So <laughs> we'll get we'll get you there, and I'm sh- I'm sure you're going to catch on right away because you're killing it on LinkedIn. <clears throat> All right, sounds good. So Lauren, thanks for being here, and everyone, thanks for joining me on episode number twenty six of Marketing and Sales over cocktails. We've got another great guest coming up next week. So again, tune in, go to the website, marketingandsalespodcast.com. Send me the question to ask Alan. And again, you get a free book if we ask your question on the air. Thanks again for joining everyone. And we'll see you next time.